uh, the leader of Turkey, and um, how obviously he's in the news quite a bit now because he was just here. And some folks are speculating that he may be even worse than he appears, that he may even be the Antichrist. We're going to talk about that here today in just a moment. Stand by, please. Yes, my friends, welcome back. Wings of the Eagle Radio is live online around the world. Thank you for tuning in, whether you are on Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, uh, whatever method you are joining us here today, or if you're on video, hello, uh, out to Facebook world, YouTube world, uh, Periscope, Twitter world, and through various um, means of getting the message out uh, today, we thank God in Jesus Christ for the opportunity, the chance, the breath of life today to serve Him and to tell the world about Him and the Word of God and the plan of God and the Spirit of God and that technology would be utilized against the devil. Uh, it's not all His. I know a lot of you know Christians want to make it, um, you know, they're afraid of technology or the internet or smartphones or all that stuff, computers. Uh, we're going to use it for the Lord, okay? We're not going to be afraid whatsoever <clears throat> in that. So, uh, good morning to you. It is now 11.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Or is it Daylight Savings? Who knows anymore? It's Eastern Time uh, here in the East Coast of the United States. I am Pastor Christopher Manti. I am President of Wings of the Eagle. And contributor to several projects, uh, among which is Armageddon News, which you are watching right now live through YouTube and Facebook, so welcome my friends. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them right on the video right here where you are, and uh, I'll do my very, very best to address it at some point, hopefully during the broadcast, um, but potentially not till later, but uh, I'll do my best to get around, get around to it, all right? Uh, let's get right into it. First of all, Father, thank you for this time, my brothers and sisters around the world, Jesus Christ. Uh, in Jesus' name. Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, and of all who believe. Amen. I hope you do believe, by the way. Um, we're just a bunch of... Shalom to you, my friend Matthew. Um, let me know you're here. Okay, just say hi down in the chat. Again, YouTube, Facebook, all have the chat um, posting features there. <clears throat> and let me know you're there, what you think. Right? Because this is a little back and forth. I always love the community aspect of um, doing live video and that's why most of the time uh, we do it live and not recorded and um, even though I'd love to create videos and be artistic it just takes much much longer um, anyway so let's get right into it <clears throat> Erdogan okay um, first off most Americans I'm learning have no idea who this man is I th shouldn't surprise me. I don't know why it does. Most Americans don't give a wit about any other leader in the world, except maybe what's happening in Israel. And that's to our credit, okay? However, um, there's a lot more countries out there. Uh, and again, it's just a, kind of a natural phenomenon being living where we do. If you're an American, you're surrounded by two oceans. We have no hostile neighbors. You know, Mexico notwithstanding. Uh, so it's just natural that we don't 
need to care, basically, about anyone else. And, uh, you know, a lot of the speech that we're hearing now from political leaders and things is all, well, it's 7,000 miles away. It's not our problem. It's not our border. Not our problem. And that scares me because as a Christian, we are one family in Messiah throughout the world. We are united by the blood of Christ, and that's it. Our nationality is Christian first. Citizens of heaven first, then your country. Doesn't mean loving your country is bad. Doesn't mean fighting for it is bad. I'm not saying any of that. Never have, never will. However, we don't really know what's going on in the world. And that's our fault, okay? It's our fault, especially in this, uh, the age of information and mass communication that we are in. There is no excuse in the universe to be ignorant, all right? Especially today with the ability to take your phone and to go into a, uh, a, a war zone and a place that's closed off and l- report live and say, hey, look at this. Don't, tell, don't rely on what the news or uh, some leader is telling you. This is the facts. Here it is. I'm talking to this witness or I'm witnessing it myself. I'm looking at this you know, attack happening. I'm looking at this protest right now. I'm looking at whatever it is. And you were seeing, and whether go to Hong Kong or South America or Europe or the Middle East or anywhere, even Washington, D.C. This past week, I was, boy, two days ago, I guess it was, uh, up in D.C. protesting this man, Erdogan, coming to my country because he's evil. All right, not a bad leader, even though our president says he's a great leader and a friend. He is not our friend. He is not anyone in America's friends. He's not anyone in the civilized world's friend. He cares about himself. He cares about his uh, burgeoning caliphate. He wants to be the Ottoman emperor. And he wants that back. And he's the guy to do it. That's his mindset. It's clear. And he's going to use jihad to do it. He's not a kind and gentler uh, leader of all Muslims. It's jihad. War is how it happens. It's always been that way and it always will. So this man should be nowhere near our White House. Certainly not afforded any respect. And we're still afraid. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into the whole Armenian genocide, which is a, a no-brainer, home-run, easy win for all political parties. Easy. Every, all, nearly everyone, except a couple crazies, will admit that it's true. And yes, Turkey's at fault. And we recognize they're a victim of genocide and the Armenians, the Christians there, uh, all the way to the same zones that we're talking about now, North Syria, Northern Iraq, Southern Turkey. This is all where this stuff happened before. And of course, Turkey denies it because they think they deserved it, frankly. Those innocent Christian girls that they put on crosses, naked. You've seen the picture. Um, anyway, so... A lot of folks, those who do know who he is and who's been following ministries like Wings of the Eagle, like Armageddon News, like Joel Richardson over the years, um, and I mean years, I don't know, I guess a lot of folks are assuming that um, this is just somehow just beginning where uh, me or folks like us are beginning to talk about Erdogan because he's in Washington or because this thing with Syria just started we all of a sudden we started caring a month ago about who Erdogan is I don't think so friend (laughs) I don't think so Um, Joel Richardson has been writing about him for over nine years when this ministry went public in 2013 we put stuff about him on our website six years ago before Donald Trump ever was nominated for anything or felt like he would wanted to run for anything. This is the Obama administration. Erdogan was still evil. And he still had a plan and a plot and you can, you can tell what was happening. And um, if there's time uh, at some point today, got, thank you, Richard. Bless you, sir. Um, If there's time later, uh, we're going to go on exclusively on the Wings of the Ego YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that. Um, By the way, we just went over 3,000 subscribers. Praise God. To YouTube, that's absolutely nothing. That's meaningless. That's A a baby showing their cat all day can get 10,000 subscribers. But uh, for what we're doing, it's pretty good. Okay? And the shoestring that we're on, it's pretty good. We don't advertise. We... we, um, 
We just put out what the Lord instructs us to do, and 3,000 folks are subscribed. So that's awesome. All right. And Wings um, Armageddon News, of course, is far more than, for than that, which is great. Okay. Uh, so later today, we'll possibly be putting on a step-by-step -step presentation about why, what Erdogan has done, some of the things, and that uh, how Turkey is acting um, expansionist and has been for years. And this is just their, what they see as their window of opportunity because they have a leader and leaders who are afraid of them. Leaders of other nations. And except for the Kurds in Israel, no one's standing up to them. I guess Russia would, would think about it if they were to feel endangered. But anyway, not a good situation. Um, so Erdogan, so a lot of folks, some folks, are now saying, well, if, if this guy is so bad and he's coming from this part of the world and he's leading a jihad and so forth, which he is, hello Clifford, Oklahoma, bless you sir, um, then can he, isn't this the Antichrist? It, could this be the one? And uh, I would have sympathy for that. Um, but again, I don't think it's true. And there are several reasons why. Um, I do want to make sure to get all the comments I can. The problem is when you're viewing all these uh, windows, they're seldom uh, the right size to see all the comments that come in. So bear with me for that. I apologize. All right, praise God. So again, uh, Pastor Manti here, uh, all different channels, let me know. Uh, me too. Uh, Sonia, hey, Sonia. Sonia is about ready to explode here on the scene. She's a sister, former Muslim, Pakistani, grew up in England. And uh, she's, been, she's been talking about this guy, she says, since 2005. Bless the Lord for that. Yeah, um, so... Again, it doesn't take much. We're not geniuses or anything that are watching this guy and, and t telling you about him. It's just um, most folks don't know, all right? Uh, but those who do, hopefully, some way or another, uh, are going to wise up and catch the, catch the point of all this. Um, so, okay, is he the Antichrist? No, he's not. How do I know for sure? Just like I know Barack Obama's not the Antichrist. Or pick your favorite leader. Uh, Republican, Democrat, Russian leaders, European leaders, Macron, uh, Prince Charles. I've heard all this junk. Um, you name it. Or Israeli leaders even. If you think the Antichrist is a Jewish person, which really has no scriptural basis at all. Um, all of that. The point is this, number one, the book of Daniel is absolutely crystal clear that he has no power until the end, until these, this super nation or this conglomeration is coming together, this hegemony, fancy word, uh, of Muslim nations come together. Those are the nations that surround Israel. That is the prophecy, okay? That's what God has set up. And of course, so Satan has set it up like that. So he put his guys all around Israel. And that's why you see Hamas and all these rocket attacks and things all the time, because they just have a, the, this ancient primal hatred for God's people who are the Jews. And if we as Christians believe, then we are grafted in to that tree. That tree is a natural kingdom called Israel. And Jesus will rule that Zionist kingdom, yes, whoa, um, when he returns. Okay, so but he was trying to expand that kingdom as big as possible until then. That's our job. Not to, uh, anyway, that's our job. So, uh, Daniel's clear that he doesn't have any power until these ten kings, it calls it, in Revelation and Daniel, these ten kings come together to form an alliance, to form one nation, basically, okay? They have ten different nations, but yet they're acting as one. That's called a caliphate in the history, okay? That's exactly what it was like. Um, different administrators, different parts got together and agreed to be one. Um, that's in Muslim doctrine. That's what a lot of 
basically all fundamentalist Muslims who are serious about their faith want out of the world. Just like a Christian would want every nation to be Christian, right? Or have Christians in it as the majority and then hopefully you get some righteous activity and, and, and laws and all that, right? So it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. So yes, um, Muslims want what's prescribed, which is a um, religious government. But there, see, in Islam, it's all the same thing. There is no separating, separation, separating the nation from the religion, from the military. It's all the same because God is in control of it all. So he's, his man is the caliph, uh, Khilafa, okay? Is the, the Khilafa, by the way, is not just the kingdom, it's the person. So it's, again, it's one, it's seen as one. Imagine the Pope is the president, is the commander in chief. All the same guy. So that's why it's a dangerous situation in the end times, because this is what the Bible tells us will happen. Um, so, okay. So Daniel tells us this guy cannot, this, this what he calls the little horn, or this Antichrist, this last one, this last leader, does not, he says it comes from nowhere. He comes from small beginnings with a small people, and he has no power until the ten kings give him the power. So he can't be a leader today. He can't be a leader before the ten kings show up and unite and become one and agree. And, by the way, agree to not only uh, become one themselves, but one in negotiation with Israel. Because that's really the prize, as we all should know. Jerusalem and uh, signing the covenant right with them to peace, 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 when we know the all real goal is to invade. And that happens three and a half years later. But for the, all that to happen, and the Antichrist to show up and to make that deal with Israel, the ten have to unite first. Before that, he has no power. He is not a leader. He's not control of Turkey. He's not president of the United States. He's not in the European Union in some leadership. He's not from any of those places with any power. He's not a prime minister of anything. The Erdogan has a multi-decade history of being a mayor, of being the founder of a political party, of being in parliament, of being the president, and now, uh, no, prime minister. And then he got rid of, there were two, a prime minister and a president, and they kind of uh, divided the power up. So you, it's like a check and a balance, right? Well, he got rid of one, so now they're the same. Big surprise, he's the one, okay? So uh, he's been in politics for 20 plus years, 30 years, and he's had this plan all along, friends, to put himself in control, to make a fake coup to give himself more power. That happened th uh, two years ago. Why doesn't uh, our leaders today either admit this or tell us the truth? Well, spirit of fear, uh, spiritual warfare, um, there's a lot of that, <clears throat> okay? Um, uh, Andrew, yeah, amen, amen. Jesus will be shouted from the rooftops of Facebook, no doubt. Uh, Brendan says the Antichrist comes from the pit. Not exactly. Um, doesn't really say that. You're talking about uh, the second beast from Revelation 9, the fifth trumpet. And there's a locust king who comes from the pit, okay? But, again, the, the greater picture and the actions and so forth seem to indicate this is not something that happens at the beginning of the seven years, but after. Well, he, the Antichrist, this one leader, has to be on the scene before that. Um, okay. But I know where it comes from. Don't, don't get me wrong. And again, you're also Revelation 17, right? The one who comes out of the pit. Okay, so like, there's a kingdom that's dead, it says. That it comes back. There's a kingdom that dies, that looks to be dead to the world, but it is resurrected at the end. That's the caliphate. It's pretty clear, because ancient Babylon is not coming back. There are kingdoms in those places that we have to look at, which is what I'm always on about. Iran and Iraq, excuse me, Iraq and Syria is Babylon, and there was a kingdom that rose up there called Isis. But they're very closely related to this kingdom up north from Yavin, or Turkey, 
and there's this other one off to the side called Persia or Iran. So all those play in to each other and with each other and fight before all this Ten King things happen. So that's why none of these leaders, no Iranian leader, no Iraqi leader, Syrian leader, Bashar al-Assad, I've heard from more than one person is the Antichrist. He's not. Erdogan also is not. Uh, some people say, this is Ezekiel 38, here we go. Now, granted, the land of Ezekiel 38, Gog of Magog, is Turkey. Okay, Magog is in Turkey. Gog is the leader of that land. It says Gog of Magog, Meshach, Tubal, etc., etc. That's all in Turkey. And there's pictures of maps to prove that. Uh, Yavon, in this area that Daniel mentions, that... Um, we get really zoomed in on this location. So there's no reason to look for the Antichrist, first of all, from anywhere other than the northern part of the Middle East. None. Don't bother. It's not going to happen. Okay? Not from Israel, not from America, not from Europe, not from Russia. None of that's possible. Not even from Africa, not even from Arabia. Forget it. He says he's called the Assyrian, he's called the King of the North, he's called, you know, Gog of Magog. These are very specific geographical indicators, okay? Now, Erdogan does fit that, those qualifications, but that's not the only qualifications, okay? Ezekiel 38 is a gathering of all these nations as one nation. That's who Gog, King Gog the Antichrist, will lead that, not just Turkey, all of them. Look at the nations that are listed there. Persia is there. The nations of, of North Africa are there. All the Middle Eastern parts are there. Not just Turkey. It's way bigger than that. So that's why Erdogan is not. So, number one, he doesn't have the right geography uh, combined. And number two, um, he doesn't, Antichrist doesn't have any power before he gets it. Okay? If he has it, then he's here. If he's the leader of a country, it can't be him. No matter what he looks like, no matter what the conditions he meets other than that, the timing is off. He's, and this is why I'm calling Erdogan a forerunner. He's a forerunner of Antichrist. Um, that I can deal with, right? I can say that. And in fact, again, years and years, um, now, uh, I've been saying watch out for Erdogan as the great horn of the goat nation described in Daniel 8 and that's where now there's a great war coming between Persia, Iran and Yavin or Turkey. That's what the Bible says. That's what brings about the final kingdom through those wars, through those fights, through those political things. Okay, that's where it comes from. But that hasn't happened yet. So we're not, don't get too far along the track. Um, I've been you know, again, just personal opinion. I've been saying this great horn of the goat sure looks like Erdogan. And that was five years ago. And so we're just waiting because in the narrative of Daniel 8, by the way, Daniel 8 is just a snippet. Okay. It agrees with Daniel 7 and 11 and 10. It's all talking about the same stuff, end time only. So when this final battle comes, and there's this leader from what we call Turkey today, or, or uh, Yavin, J-A-V-A-N or Y-A-V-A-N is the Hebrew pronunciation. Not Greece. Your Bible's wrong. If it says Greece, it's incorrect. And it's not anyone's fault. It's just they didn't get it. It's way bigger than that. Okay, so in this, hopefully I'll show some pictures of this in this uh, video later on Wednesday the Eagle YouTube. All right. Uh, so anyways... He could very well be that leader, that great horn, that great leader who comes against Persia. And that's the clue, okay? <laughs> that's when we know things are going to get serious. It's, it's, it's serious at that point, okay? Because that means Persia has already invaded his lands. And he's leading the counterattack um, against him. Uh, here's a question or a statement from Andrew. If we are witnessing the fulfillment of Daniel 8, why are we surprised or upset about the current situation in the Middle East? See, now, this is a very, I'm glad you asked that because you raised two completely different issues. Seeing Bible prophecy fulfilled is not going to be fun or make you happy. 
in the book of Amos, it says, those who desire the day of the Lord, why, what are you thinking? It's going to be gloomy and dark, and you're going to hate it. Okay? Not all fun and games. Um, why would you be upset? Why would you be upset at Hitler killing the Jews, son? That's what I would say. Of course, why wouldn't you be upset? It doesn't matter if it's prophesied or not. You can be upset. Okay? It's unjust. It's evil. We're supposed to hate evil. It not only is it okay to be upset, but you're supposed to be. People are dying and going to hell. If that doesn't upset you, then you're not a Christian. And this, these events are accelerating the process of people going to hell. Is that happy for you? It's not happy for me. It's not happy for God. You know, guys, just because God has seen the end from the beginning and has a plan about how it's all going to come about doesn't mean he's happy about it. Do you know what I mean? And it doesn't mean we're going to be happy. Being upset? What's wrong with being upset? You're supposed to mourn and wail and lament. This is part of our Christian duty. Repent, repent, repent. This is not a, a going a, a, to the amusement park. And by the way, even if these things are unstoppable, okay, and let's say they are, you still are accountable as a believer in Jesus to what you did during that time and what you said during that time. Yes, even on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. It is always on record in heaven what you said and what you did. You don't, you don't think that the Christians and thousands and millions of Christians in Germany who close their ears and their eyes and shut the church doors while the Jews were led away in the trains to the ovens. Do you think God didn't have a word with those people? Oh, he had words. What are you thinking? I thought you were mine. I thought you were my sons. How could you not do anything or say anything or be a witness? They were afraid. Afraid to act. And that's what many of us are. Sorry, it's true. And this attitude of why be upset is part of that. Why be upset? Is your heart frozen cold? What are the words? You're fulfilling the terms that Jesus is saying in the negative. You're fulfilling the bad part of God's word. You're a believer who has grown cold in your love. You're not supposed to, you're not judged on whether you love those who love you, correct? We, it's about those who don't love you. What did you do? You're supposed to love them who hate you. He said, what credit is it to you, Jesus would say, if you just love those who love you back? It's no credit to you. You have to love those who hate you and want to kill you. I want to suppress the gospel. I want to invade innocent people and kill babies. Okay? That's evil. It doesn't matter if it's part of God's ultimate plan or not. He's still going to ask you, what did you do? Look at Matthew 25. What did you do when these things to my brothers were happening? Oh, Lord, well, I didn't see you. Where were you? Were you to feed or clothe or shelter or pray for or give them money? Oh, no, money? We have to give our money? <laughs> you darn sure better. You better be tithing to end times ministries who are telling the truth. I don't care if it's mine or not. Or Armageddon News or whatever. But you better be doing something with your money. It's, it's not eternal. <laughs> Treasures in heaven are eternal. All right. So I'm sorry. I don't mean to pick on that question, Andrew. But that mindset I do. Because your heart growing cold is not okay. We are judged on how we treated those who are mistreated. Especially in these lands of the Bible where these things are coming true. Since we know beforehand what's going to happen, isn't it our duty to act on that? 
to be there, to have some kind of support system for those who would come? All right, does that help you? Sup we shouldn't be surprised, but we sh I am surprised at uh, my leader, my president who speaks for me, lying about it. So yes, that is surprising. And that he wouldn't come against such an evil man, for example. And I'm not throwing anyone else under the bus. You're all responsible for your country's leaders too. They represent you. And so when he's in there in my White House inviting an evil dictator who kills non-believers, Christians, and other Muslims, and innocent people because he wants an Ottoman Empire back, that's wrong. And if I didn't speak out about that, I am failing in my witness, in my prophetic witness. Yes, we all have a prophetic witness. So we can say, yes, God has ordained this, but guess what? He went, sent Jonah to Nineveh, this same place in Iraq, okay, these same places that we're talking about, to save thousands, even though God wanted to destroy it. Do you see how it's not all cut and dry like that? God will work in this if you're willing. Not staying at home or in front of your computer hitting like or sad face or angry face. All right. Uh, let's go to YouTube. That's always fun. So I hope I have explained a little. How do we get a thumbs down? How is it? How, how do you come onto YouTube and give thumbs down to such a easy video? Is this upsetting someone? Are there Turkish agents on YouTube right now? Oh, man. Um, it's all possible right. for your country's leaders, too. Hey, I don't want to hear that. Um, I'm sorry, I got some Wings of the Eagle folks. Get out of my screen, you YouTube ad. Hello, Michelle. Great pleasure. Afternoon, Tanya from the UK. Blessings, blessings to you. Um... Uh, Chris, totally agree. Um, yeah, well, I mean, any day, it could. if there's anything imminent in Bible prophecy, it's not the return of Jesus, right? He can't come today. Sorry. Um, but the ram and the goat might. So we got to be careful here. Um, okay, let's... Okay, I'm going to go to my... To Wings of the Eagle stuff first. Sorry. Um... We have empathy and compassion. That moves us to action intercession. Yes, bingo, bingo. Um, watch and pray for understanding as far as uh, Erdogan, yes. Um, Gabriel says, it does upset me. Good, I agree. Um, prayer and fasting, absolutely. Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it does hit hard. Yes, it does. Uh, we are called to condemn evil while loving the people who practice it. That is correct, Michael. Bingo. And not to, who, nobody's saying it's easy. The Lord didn't say it would be easy. But it's still the, the our marching orders, right? Uh, Nineveh repented in sackcloth, and, sackcloth, ashes, and fasting. Correcto. You got it. You got it. You got it. So it's a big deal. All right, and God is going to, he's not blind to this. He's going to, he's going to really, um, I think, take us to, to task on this stuff. Uh, hey, Andrew, sorry, man. Uh, good answer. Hey, bless God. Um, I am upset and have sent support to FAI. Good. FAI is one of those places I would recommend. Very, very good. I'm really trying to understand what our response should be to witnessing prophecy fulfilled. Well, man, brother, I'm with you, dude. Like, this is where I'm at right now even as you know someone with responsibilities to congregations which is what i have it's 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 on a whole nother level okay uh when it's not only about understanding it yourself you have to teach that understanding to those who you're shepherding and to all you folks who maybe are under other shepherds as the body of christ brothers and sisters that we all can understand this and how to proceed i agree with you and it's i am also trying to understand how this happens but um it's a real, real, because I see it so many times, Andrew. I didn't mean to jump on you. I just kind of made you a, a symbol of all these folks who would come on and just say, oh, the heck with this. You know, they're too 
they're 7,000 miles away, they're not, it's not our country, why do I care? Uh, why should I be upset if it's prophecy? It's God's will. And that's, I, a couple weeks ago, I even did a whole teaching on you know God's will versus what we want. Um, so yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm, so forgive me if I came at you hard. <sighs> but yes, it's definitely a dynamic that we're gonna have to figure out here. How do we address this? Okay, let's go to Wings of the Eagle f uh, YouTube channel. And there is, there is a question. Um, MLW says, what verse says he has no power? Okay, that's in the book of Daniel. Okay, we're talking about the, uh, he calls the little horn. Uh, but so, behold, I was considering the horn, Daniel 7, for example, consider little horns there, verse 8, another horn, a little one coming up from among them, meaning the ten, among the ten, so the ten are there first. Uh, let's just go back a verse. Night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong, and it had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts before it. It had ten horns. So the beast with ten horns exists already. Then... As I was looking, considering there was another one, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes, eyes, eyes of a man and mouth speaking pompous words. Okay, so that's, that's one example. Daniel 7, Daniel 8, uh, verse... Let's go 8 through... So this is, again, the process. We have the Persian ram, okay, the Iranian nation invading the territories. Then the goat with this great horn on it, this first king it's, it's called. And by the way, a first king would mean it would be a new kingdom, right? All right, so it's coming back, and it fights, and it devours, and it d totally destroys Iran. Uh, therefore, the male goat grew very great. That means the nation, the goat nation... And that should bring us back to Jesus' words, right? I'll separate the sheep and the goats and the, all the nations will be before me. So there's a goat nation, and it grew great. In other words, it expanded. It got bigger. That's what Erdogan is a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit doing now. It's not, I hope you are not confused or fooled by his propaganda that it's about terrorism or that it's about a safe zone. Okay, That's bogus. He wants to expand his country. That's it. He wants to move the borders. That's Hitler, okay? Think of Hitler. Same thing. Uh, the male goat grew very great, so he grew, his borders expanded. But when he became strong, the large horn was broken. So this leader, if it's Erdogan, he will be killed or deposed, removed from power, thrown in jail, but probably killed before any of this happens, before the Antichrist shows up. So even if we can pin this title on him, and I don't know, I don't know if we can do that yet because it hasn't happened yet, um, but whoever this one is will be dead, okay? He cannot be the Antichrist. He'll be removed and replaced, it says, with four notable ones in its place, in his place. That means notable, um, somehow they're popular or they're powerful or they're noticeable, f public thing. Um, four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. What does that mean? The four winds of heaven are north, south, east, and west. And out of one of them, the northern one that we get from other scriptures, came a little horn, which grew exceedingly toward great, toward the south, the east, and the glorious land, which is Israel. So it comes from the north, goes to the south, east, and west. The little horn gets its power. The three horns are removed, east, south, and west. The northern ones take takes over. This is after all this comes together. All right, it grew up to the host of heaven and cast some of the host, some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. Look at Revelation 12. Then he exalted himself as high as the prince of the host. Blah blah blah. There's the Antichrist and the abomination of desolation. So we've got to zoom right into that time. All right, so there's another one that again the little horn doesn't come up until after this process. Um. Let's go to Daniel 11. 
Same thing happens. Persia will come out through the to the realm of Yavan. It will invade Yavan. Then a mighty king shall arise who shall with great rule with great dominion. Again, that means a very large land area. Uh, this is verse of three, Daniel eleven three, and do according to his will. When he has arisen, his kingdom shall be broken up. So he rises first, then he dies. Broken up into four toward the four winds of heaven, north, south, east, and west, but not among his posterity, in other words, not his children, not his relatives, uh, nor according to his dominion which he ruled. They won't necessarily be Turkish, for his kingdom will be uprooted even for others besides these. Then it talks about the very, very detailed account of the kings of the south and the kings of the north, so there'll be civil wars in this. While this caliphate forms, a lot of this will be infighting. Then if we go down to the final king of the north, um, in his place, now again, we've got a series of false Christs, okay, false messiahs here, false caliphs, uh, hilafas. Uh, in his place shall arise a vile person whom they will not give the honor of royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. So this is, this is why another verse where you can say this is not a current leader. He does not have credentials. Um, let's read another translation. Despicable man who is not in line for royal secession. He will. This is the New Living Translation. He will slip in when least expected and take over by flattery and intrigue. Um, another one says, not be given the honor of royalty. He will invade the kingdom when its people are secure and will seize it through intrigue. He will come in without warning and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Um, royal honor will not be given to him, but he will come during a time of peace and seize the kingdom by intrigue. Um, without warning, not given the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in time of security. Okay, so we get the um, point on that. Okay, so that's where I look to say, you know, seven, eight, and Daniel seven, eight, and eleven, to say he's not, he has no power before this. Okay, um, what else we got? So that was a good question, though. I like it. What else we got here? Um, okay, looks like we're caught up there. So let's. Go to Armageddon News. That's always a fun place to go. Uh, okay. Let's check it out on YouTube. Okay, a bunch of stuff. Boy, 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 active. I love it. Okay, let's. I'm going to go back to see if Erdogan's name is 666 in Geometria. First of all, even if that is true, it's not relevant. Sorry. Um, will Erdogan triumph? Yes, I believe ultimately he will. Is too soft to be the Antichrist, says says Kaltijin. Sorry if I mispronounced you. Um, Geometria, God isn't interested, you shouldn't be either. Okay, that's a fair point. Russia will occupy Turkey. No, they will not. No, they will not. How do I know that? Because again, we're talking about prophetic things. We know certain things. Turkey rises. This is it's gaining in power. It's a large. Uh, the kingdom is centered there. This is where the Ottoman Empire was centered. This is where the new one comes back from. Russia has nothing to do with it. Um, da, 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 da. Astrology. Blah blah. Joel Richardson blocked me for preaching about the biblical flat earth. The earth is round. It's a lie to say it's flat. Sorry. Sorry, just wanted to get that in there. Um, God's word declares it's round. Uh, Yeshua is the way, and Jesus is the same name as Yeshua. Okay, guys, relax about that. Okay. Yeshua to Greek, Sayusos, Sayusos to English is Jesus. Same exact name. Relax. This dude, I guess me, Lance says, Lance Rourke, this dude refuses to acknowledge the law. Huh? He hates Yah's law. 
and proclaims that the law was hung on the cross when enmity for breaking the law was all that was hung on the cross. I don't know what all that means. <laughs> Is Jesus uh, adequate to forgive any sin against the law? Of course. Anyway, not going there. Uh, any questions? Any pertinent things? Or you just kind of go off on your tangents here. Um, Bible says the man of sin will be revealed to the believers. Hence, Christians are on the earth and at the same time the AC is. Well, that's obviously true. Yes, there's no rapture before that. Paul is not an apostle. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Uh, Obama is the Antichrist. Oh, here's a good one. Let's see these facts. Obama's, he's not the Assyrian. He's not from Assyria. He's never been in Assyria as far as I know. So how could he be one? Be the Antichrist. Um, Obama will reemerge to lead the world. No, he won't. Uh, even if that's true somehow, it doesn't mean he's the Antichrist. You understand? The Antichrist is regional. Uh, Since the Antichrist will survive a mortal head wound. No, it does not. No, it does not say that. If you look at Revelation 13, it says the beast, one of his heads was wounded. The head of the beast, a, one of the seven heads, is a kingdom. Revelation 17, the heads are kingdoms. The kingdom is what gets uh, destroyed or killed and then comes back to life. That's the caliphate, not an individual. I really don't believe that. Um, um, all nations can be saved, yes. Here, oh, here, I knew I'd find one of one of these opinions. The AC comes from the nation of Israel and is a Jew. False. None. No evidence. No scripture. Not true. You just hate the Jews. Um, USA is toast. Potentially. Revelation 17 and 18. That's Mystery Babylon. And America is not Mystery Babylon. So we might be toast, but it's not because of that. It's not because of Revelation 17 and 18. Um, okay, back and forth about Freemasons. You know, can we do a favor here? I love you guys, but if we're com if you're watching a video and, and chatting on it, let's stick to the video, what the person is talking about, and stay on topic, and not just throw all the way wild stuff all over the place. Okay. Uh, Gabriel says that Daniel says the beast is going to be of the Latin peoples. No, he does not. I suggest, Gabriel, you read Joe Richardson's book called Mideast Beast. He dispels completely the European theory. That verse specifically in Daniel 9. The people of the prince to come, those were not Latins who did that. No, no Europe. Sorry. Uh, oh, Matt chimed in on that already. Very good. Very good. Um, be like Matt. <laughs> That's not my words. That's spicy. Spicy somebody, sorry. Spicy flavor. Tide pods. No, no we're not. Listen, we're not negotiating. We're not talking about Tide pods. Um, okay. I think that's good enough for Armageddon News on YouTube. Um, let's check out Facebook before we go, okay? Uh, here we go, Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Thank you for sharing. Love you. Uh, Revelation 12, 1. Could the moon under her feet represent Islam? No. Good question, though. Um, I say no because it's a reference to Genesis 37. Um, the dream of Joseph and his brothers and his mother and father are the sun and the moon. So the image of the woman with the 12 stars and the sun and the moon is a reference to Joseph's dream and the nation of Israel. Um, that's okay. No, no, no worries. No worries. Um, meaning he put it under his feet when he comes. Well, yeah, I mean, generally, sure. Definitely, uh, Jesus will put Islam under his feet when he returns. No, that's a true statement. Um, but it's not Revelation 12, 1 that you get that from. It's, uh, you have to follow the... Um, story in that, the uh, narrative, okay, and the symbols and symbology of that. Revelation 12, 1 is not, not the end. In fact, it's the ancient past, okay? 
Uh, we have free, actually a full teaching on Revelation 12 on video on YouTube. I think it's on the Facebook page as well. Um, just search in Revelation 12 full study, or verse by verse study, Wings of the Eagle. Every single verse broken down. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, okay, very good. Thank you, Laurel. Uh, Andrew says, The Lord haters will be offended by what you are preaching. Well, praise God. That's good, right? Um, and it says, Is Trump impeachment in the prophecy? Absolutely not. Nope. Nope. No American president and their adventures or, or controversies are in the Bible, period. The, the only um, connection you can make between a power, a global power like America, not necessarily just America, but a power like us, at this point in history we are, um, and scripture is how we treat Israel. So if we're going to come up with, which is what we always have done, which is bogus peace plans for Israel that involves dividing the land, dividing Jerusalem, God will be against you. So, and I'm almost positive that Trump's plan, whatever, he, he's holding off on releasing it because the Israeli elections haven't been decided yet, even though it's been months and months and months. Um, He's waiting to see if Netanyahu's still the, in charge or not. Um, but I almost guarantee you that his plan will also include dividing of the land, which every other time we've tried it has meant disaster for America. So in that way, you can say, yes, something that might happen with a president could affect prophetic things, but only in that, only in that way. Because ultimately the you know, the, the covenant with death and hell, right? The one, the, the, the Antichrist and the signing and the, the abomination, all that stuff is all Israel-centric. And it has to involve Israel on the one hand and her, her neighbors on the other. The Muslim nations that surround her are the only parties that matter. It doesn't matter what America puts out there. Ever. Or Europe. Or Russia. Or anybody. None of it matters when the actual nations of the Muslim world are making the deal. That's why the Antichrist comes to begin with. He's the one who can do it. He makes the deal that all the Muslim nations and Israel, those are the two parties. Anyone outside of those two parties is not relevant. Right? Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, what it... Okay, let's... I'm going to try to be fair and go around the horn here. Hopefully no one's asking anything on Twitter because I'm not even checking that. Uh, where it, Here, Gabriel, this is a good one. <clears throat> um, oh, there's a whole bunch of good stuff in here. Oh, man, Sonia and Gabriel are going to town. Uh, praise God. <sighs> um... Okay, Isa and Mahdi, yeah, that's a good way to be thinking of it. Uh, where is Assyria today? Assyria is northern Iraq, northern Assyria, northern Syria, northern Iraq, and southern Turkey. That's Assyria. Um, so, when somebody says, I know where the Antichrist is from, I say, oh, is he from Iraq, Syria, or Turkey? No. Then I know it's wrong. Um, if Jesus, if Jesus will return in human form, well, we know that. Of course, he will, because he has the same body he left with, um, and will rule on earth. He will probably have some kind of royal car. <laughs> I think the Bible calls it a white horse or a white Mustang. How's that? And we can be a car and a horse at the same time. All right? Oh, man. Praise God. All right. We're just about out of here, folks. Um, are we, are we, we're not fighting about Israel over here, are we? The U.S. is not in the final battle. That's probably right. So now here's the Fuji Wuji. I'm sure that's not your real name. Uh, 
U.S. is not in the final battle, so its destruction must be the event that triggers the beginning of the tribulation. I don't understand how you get to those points and connect them. What does one have to do with the other? The U.S. could be, let's say, destroyed 10 years before the tribulation starts. What's the, why do they have to be connected? Again, you're not using scripture. That's the danger. When you're going outside the Bible, you're in trouble. Because it's all speculation then. That's, I'm not saying it's wrong, that it could happen right at that time, but why would you say it for sure? You don't know it for sure. It's not even connected at all, potentially. Maybe America's not destroyed at all. I don't know that. See, that's the thing about Bible prophecy. If it's in there, we do know it. If it's not in there, we don't know it. Um, so the U.S. could be destroyed. It could just be sidelined. It could be fighting its own war. Maybe we got invaded by Russia and China. We're just distracted. Maybe we can't send troops because we don't have any left. We're busy. Or we don't care. Or our hearts are cold, so cold that it's 7,000 miles away, not our border. We don't care. It could be any of that stuff, brother. Uh, right? Oh, we're not going to the real Israelites or black thing. That's just stupid. Um, Obama must be the Antichrist. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. And no, he's not. The moon and stars with a pregnant woman, that was an eclipse. No, it was not. Okay? No, it was not. It's not an eclipse. It's not a, it's not a something you can... Look, you have to interpret the Bible with the Bible, correct? We can't stop doing that. The Revelation 12 revelation is a huge period of time, and it's not about astrology or astronomy even. It's not about the actual stars. Stars are angels in that passage. Um, except the crown of 12 stars. Again, that's the, those are the 12 tribes of Israel, so the woman is Israel. She was pregnant at that time because she hadn't delivered Jesus yet. She was pregnant with the Messiah. That's the Old Testament story. Israel is pregnant with the Messiah in labor to be born. Then he is born. Then he goes up to God, right? He escapes the dragon trying to kill him. He goes up to heaven. And then Daniel's 70th week can begin after that. Well, we're still waiting for that. Uh, I am absolutely lost, Robin, says, Robin Mitchell says, because the USA is Mystery Babylon. Okay, even if I was wrong about that, which I'm not. But even if I was, how would that make me lost, sister or brother, maybe, Robin? Uh, how would that make me a lost soul? I could still be saved and be wrong about Mystery Babylon. I got news for you. So can you. I'm not saying you're unsaved because you said you were saved Mystery Babylon. That's stupid. That's immature. All right. Um... The bottomless pit is the Golan Heights. That does, that's like, you could take the two opposite words. Like, Golan Heights means high, not pit. Oy. All right, enough, enough, enough. No, let's not talk more about Obama. Uh, he's not relevant. Revelation 17 and 18 is about Mystery Babylon being destroyed. Yes, it's about a desert, a great city in the desert. By the sea. That's not America. All right, I'm out of here. Um, good, yeah. God, God be with us, indeed. Okay, praise God. So Erdogan, to summarize, is not the Antichrist because of what we pointed out in Daniel. And but he is a forerunner. I do believe that he's he's uh, checks some of the boxes for the Antichrist. It's true, but not all. So he's a forerunner. And what is he doing, by the way? He's convincing the leader of the free world to put forth propaganda from the Caliphate instead of the truth about what's happening with the Kurds and Syria and stuff. So that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That you you can through intrigue he takes over. So he is uh, convincing the world power, the greatest power in the world, to lie for him. That's pretty significant. Um, 
I just saw a new... Uh, Iptia says, is the image of the beast the Kaaba stone that Muslims bow to? Maybe. That's all I've got to say about that. Uh, maybe. It's possible. Not going to speculate beyond that because that's all it would be. Suzanne. Uh, hey, Suzanne, just logged in. Do you have any videos on Daniel Light Ram the Goat? Yes. Um, please go through the um, Wings of the Eagle video library. And uh, we've done tons of either radio or um, other presentations. Um, and we'll do more because apparently this is a big deal that the church has to know. It is a big deal. Um, that the church needs to learn about. So we, I'll put, we'll do more, okay? Very good. All right. Don't go. When you talk about Obama, the Antichrist, are you trying to, are you joking? Is this like a, a trend to, what do they call that? Be a troll? Uh, anyways, praise God. All right. Oh, see, now I got another one. Okay, let's try this one. Um, Anguinaldo says, will Iran and Turkey be allies or enemies in future events? For now, they're going to fight. There'll be a huge war. They will be the main um, parties. Iran and Turkey will go to war. So uh, f near term, not friends. Definitely enemies. However, once Turkey counterattacks Iran and kills all their leaders, and as they would put it, probably liberate the Persian Empire, um, then they come together. But we're not there yet. There's major conflict that must happen first. And it's th like Ezekiel 38, you see Persia and Turkey are together. That is the result of all these steps that we see from, for example, from Daniel and other prophets, that the kingdom, like Revelation 13 says, the beast kingdom, the one at the end, is made up of lion, bear, and leopard together. Lions, the land of Babylon, which is Iraq and Syria. The bear is Persia, which is Iran. And the leopard is Yavon, or greater Turkey. When those three are one nation, then we can begin to look for the Antichrist. But we're not there yet. Okay, and the second part of that question was, how does Russia fit into biblical prophecy? I don't believe it does at all. Just my opinion. That doesn't mean they don't have a role in, 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 in facilitating this or moving this event ahead or something, but they are not mentioned to my understanding of 25, 30 years studying this stuff. And that doesn't mean anything, I understand, but uh, Holy Spirit's our teacher. I don't see any, ver I cannot point to one verse in the scripture that talks about Russia doing anything. Doesn't mean they don't matter, doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means they don't play a part prophetically in the scriptures. So just like America doesn't. So I, anything would be speculation. Um, okay, does that help? I hope it does. All right. Last time around, I promise, and then we'll get out of here. I thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, they get a good laugh out of uh, out of uh, the Golan Heights being the pit. Yeah, that was fun. Um. Okay, so we're good there. Very good. Very good. So by the way, thank you for watching. This has been Wings of the Eagle Radio, even though I haven't taken a break. Um, please support this ministry if it has helped you. If you've learned anything in this past hour or so, uh, please return the favor. Go to wingsoftheeagle.com slash donate. Give whatever you can. $10, $5. Um, it all helps. Trust me, because there is no bankroll of this ministry. There is no corporation supporting us. There is no church 
Uh, it's really my home church, of course. We come under the auspices of my local church, Iron Faith Fellowship, and uh, we do get a small stipend from them, just being a missionary group. Um, that doesn't mean anything other than uh, I want to tell the full truth about it. But basically, there's no one's, okay, there's no corporate support, there's no automatic support, it's just you. You are the reason why we can do this. And not only Wings of the Eagle stuff, we're doing End Time Church. If you need a church, if you're out there looking, wow, nobody's talking about this stuff in my churches, come to endtime.church, Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's myself and Pastor Jake McCandless. We co-pastor that congregation. Um, and we help out Armageddon News whenever possible. Sometimes we post stories, we respond to folks' questions, um, et cetera, help to moderate, because there's a lot of crazies out there. Sorry, you guys, but a lot of y'all are crazy. Uh, some of some of y'all, very small number. Okay. But anyway, I do what I can to, to help out um, based on what the Lord has told us. All right. Um, okay. So thank you. Again, support us if you can. Any monthly would be phenomenal. Then we could actually begin to count on support of a month, which right now we don't because it's so sporadic. But uh, I thank you. Just want to be honest. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for asking your questions. Thank you for, uh, even if I dismissed it and was perhaps cruel or um, and out of the spirit, I apologize. Um, I, just, I just really feel like most members of the body of Christ need to hear an authoritative yes or no. When you, when you are really convinced by God that the scripture saith this and doesn't sayeth that, then just don't be afraid to say yes or no. Um, but at the same time, be, always be open, always be teachable, always let scripture interpret scripture, let the Holy Spirit do the teaching, no one else. And so with that, I leave you and I thank you and I bless you in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Um, Let's continue to love God, love each other, let the world know that we are his disciples by our love for one another and by our love for those who hate us. Yes, love jihadis, love the Muslims, love the atheists, love the socialists, love everyone who comes against you in any way. And get out there, get to, you know, be involved in Syria, be involved with Turkey, be involved in protesting, that's okay, that's good. You're showing that you're made of something, right? You're showing the Lord, hey, I'm willing. Here I am, send me. Just like Isaiah. So let's uh, continue to do that and love each other on the way. All right, I've got one last question because Wings of the Eagle people are my favorite people. Katrina says, are we still far from the rise of the Antichrist? Do you think it will be still one or two generations before it happens? Again, speculation, I cannot say for sure, obviously. Um, the thing that is going to tell us how close we are is when Iran and Turkey go to war. When they do, we can say with certainty that the Antichrist is very close. Within five years. Um, so I'll say, what year is it? <laughs> I say within five years is, a, is my guess. But he's not on the scene yet. He's somewhere, right? If he's gonna, if it's gonna be five years away or less, then he's somewhere doing something right now. I don't know what what he's doing or where he's at. Uh, but he's not leading a country, and that is why Erdogan is not the Antichrist, but he is a forerunner. So I bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your questions, comments, concerns, and even disrespect at times. Uh, that's all okay. Comes with the territory. Love you so much. We'll do our best to come back next week. Be on the lookout. Please go to Wings of the Eagle YouTube channel for exclusive videos. Until next time, I love you. Pastor Christopher Manti, Wings of the Eagle. Shalom. Until next time, pray always. Meet with others who know what's coming.